Working with the maritime businesses in my district, the Department of Education, and the New York City Economic Development Corporation, we were able to establish a marine electrical training program at McKee Vocational High School and an internship program. It has been a happy marriage of, of an industry need and the local job creation. My commitment to the waterfront is not new to being named as the chairwoman of the waterfront. I grew up on the North Shore of Staten Island and I remember when ferries, five to be exact, were a major mode of transportation. I also served on the community board for 28 years. I am eager to expand success on the waterfront beyond my district. And among the matters I expect to address in this committee are the safe capping of contaminated waterfront sites, financing of ferry operations, and fully integrating ferry service into New York City's and the region's transportation plan. Ma <laughs> Making the shoreline resilient to the effects of climate change, growing our maritime businesses, integrating the working waterfront with public access, establishing one-stop waterfront permitting, and monitoring the Port Authority's clean air strategy, establishing better access for persons with disabilities to the waterfront and beaches, and maintaining and improving our infrastructure. Given the successes of my first term in office and the enthusiastic cooperation of business and government has made me opt optimistic about what can be achieved. But little can be achieved without the political will to do it. We are here today because we understand the importance of the waterfront. That's why I'm here. I know that's why you're here and I'm probably preaching to the choir. So I wanna thank you for your advocacy and your active support. But I also need you to continue to tell the story of the waterfront, its history, and its importance to the economic vitality and environmental health of our region. Tell the story to your friends and your neighbors and to your elected officials. This is how a movement grows and is sustained. It is how political will is created. Your active involvement is critical to our future and to future generations. And I wanna thank you for your, your um, support. And now, it gives me great pleasure to introduce someone who is very important to the continued vitality on our waterfront. Mr. Kyle Kimball, who is the New York City Economic Development Corporation president. There have been extensive development taking place on our city's waterfronts, as exemplified in, once again, my district. In case you haven't heard, we have construction of the world's tallest observation wheel and the city's first high-end outlet mall, which is slated to begin this fall. We also have development taking place at the Home Port, Triangle Equities, the Lighthouse Museum, and a new waterfront park. Indeed, they are great projects and they are changing our waterfront. Much of the major economic development of the past 12 years took place on our city's waterfronts. I spent a lot of time with Kyle Kimball last fall, probably much to his chagrin, negotiating on the wheel and outlet mall and hotel going up next to the Staten Island Ferry. And I can attest to his high standards, deep understanding of waterfront issues, and concern regarding issues of resiliency and the waterfront. Since joining New York EDC in 2008, President Kimball has helped to implement the EDC's strategy to diversify the city's economy while developing new career paths that strengthen the middle class. His efforts have also included overseeing capital investments ranging from basic infrastructure improvements to area-wide area redevelopment projects, creating new housing, infrastructure, and job opportunities. 
Kyle Kimball was first appointed New York City EDC president by Mayor Michael Bloomberg in 2013 and now serves in this capacity under Mayor Bill de Blasio, leading EDC's efforts to position New York City as the global center for innovation and to increase economic empowerment and mobility for all New Yorkers. And it's without further ado that I give you the president and chairman of the New York City Economic Development Corporation, Kyle Kimball. So uh, thank you very much for that introduction. You've been a great partner in several of our waterfront development projects in Staten Island, uh, to Roland and to Chris Ward for inviting me today, and the whole Metropolitan Waterfront Alliance. I'm very excited to be here. I'll just take a few minutes uh, to talk about EDC and, our, and the city's accomplishments uh, and our, some of our priorities moving forward under Mayor de Blasio. So first, I want to thank the MWA for their partnership and so many individuals in this room and organizations uh, who have collectively really helped us make progress over the last several years in really re reuniting the city with its waterfront and revitalizing 528 miles of waterfront. We've increased public access uh, through beautiful new parks like Brooklyn Bridge Park and all five boroughs, providing opportunities for recreation and access to the city's unmatched natural resource and really reconnecting New Yorkers to their waterfront. And that's from living on the waterfront in Hunters Point South to continued investments like in parks like Governor's Island, Brooklyn Bridge Park, and Hudson River Park. We've also expanded the city's waterborne transportation network that with the successful East River Ferry, which I know a lot of you are keen to hear more about. Uh, and this really helped us connect isolated neighborhoods uh, in Brooklyn and Queens to one another, including Manhattan. And that has recently been extended through 2019 and has really unlocked a lot of development potential throughout the boroughs. And it really hit our three-year goal of 1.2 million riders in 14 months. And it, it carries an average of 100,000 passengers per month, and approximately 3 million riders have used it since it was launched. But in, in EDC's capacity and its, as manager of, of cities, waterfront assets, we are thinking closely about how to use ferries uh, more, more effectively. And we recently report, uh, put out a, uh, a report, a citywide ferry study in December that was preliminary. We will, we will do another one uh, soon. Uh, sorry, if I could just have your attention, please. I'll be very quick. Thank you. Um, so the report confirms that ferries have been an important development tool for the city, um, but it also provides a convenient option that enhances the city's public transportation network. And we created this resource as a tool for stakeholders citywide to think about exploring potential ferry expansion. But as an audience that cares deeply about ferries, we need to have a partnership with everyone here today as we work to find a sustainable funding model for future ferry service expansion. Because as popular as the East River Ferry is, it still operates with a substantial city subsidy, which is not sustainable over the long term. We will need your support and partnership in designing creative new solutions to help fund uh, fair, any potential ferry expansion in the future to ensure that the route's fiscal financial sustainability over the long term. And I'll be more specific about this because I know this is an audience that, like EDC, cares a lot about expansion of ferry service. A lot of you have raised the issue of transportation equity as a key policy consideration in, in considering ferry service expansion. However, it's important to be mindful that to the extent that ferry service expansion comes with a hefty subsidy that raises transportation equity issues of its own when evaluated on a per rider basis. And I'll be very specific on this point. In the case of the Rockaway Ferry, which is provided by EDC and was provided to the Rockaways in the wake of uh, Superstorm Standy when the A train was down that continues to be running this day, EDC provides an operating subsidy of nearly $30 a passenger in comparison to a $14 subsidy per passenger for the, e for the express bus from a similar location to Midtown Manhattan. And so to the extent that this is a policy area that this group of people and this group of stakeholders uh, would like to see expanded, it's, it's at this intersection of financial sustainability and transit equity that is really at the core of any policy decision. And really finding a sustainable and new source of revenue will be key to helping the city expand its ferry service. But to inject a little bit of levity into this, um, the other not so great news is that you've really left ferry expansion in the hands of 
EDC, headed by me, someone who has a troubled relationship with boats. Uh, I, <laughs> I come from Kansas, I born and raised there, uh, and so um, I'm very excited to talk to you a little bit about our land side accomplishments on the waterfront. And that is really thinking about neighborhoods that are healthy and balanced and, and interacting in a healthy way with the waterfront space. And that's also important uh, in this context of enhancing our working waterfront and preserving and expanding waterfront employment, a source of high quality middle class jobs, both are priorities that will continue in this administration. Whether or not it's in Sunset Park, Brooklyn with the uh, Sims recycling plant uh, that actually has the ability to process thousands of, recycle, thousands of tons of recycled material a day, but also on the waterfront, we are working to expand uh, the Brooklyn Army Terminal, which is a critical source of quality industrial jobs. And that space is 99% occupied. It's an incredible success story. Anytime any, you want to understand what's happening on the working waterfront, I encourage you to visit, visit Brooklyn Army Terminal, which is a model of adaptive reuse of a tremendous architectural asset um, to create and sustain great quality jobs. And in partnership with City Hall, EDC, we are actively looking at innovative ways to support and further expansion of our industrial sector uh, on our working waterfront. So of course, we are also continuing focused on recovery and resiliency across the city in the wake of Hurricane Sandy. And the mayor just recently announced a slate of improvements uh, overhauling our recovery programs. So as the, as the councilwoman mentioned, it's a very really exciting time. There's a lot of stuff that I'm not mentioning that's happening on our waterfront that we are very excited to expand, sustain, and grow, uh, and leverage our recent progress. But uh, I, I look forward to working with you and thinking about the ferry question, because it is something that we see as a tremendous asset that is underutilized for the city, but we have to do it in a sustainable and responsible way. So thank you very much for your time. I'll just reiterate what I said before. We want a great waterfront. We want to preserve Pier 40. We want to subsidize ferries. He's absolutely right. We've got to find a way to pay for it. We've got to work together with government to do that. I, with, I beg your indulgence because uh, Mayor de Blas has called an emergency meeting, so one of our panelists can't stay for the panel, and he wants to say a couple of brief words. He's uh, the head of our transportation committee. City Councilman Idanis Rodriguez from Northern Manhattan. He's very keen on ferry transit for his community and other communities, but again, he's gonna work with us to figure out how to get it and how to pay for it. Warm welcome for Idanis Rodriguez. Just a couple words, sir. Well, I think that we should give a, a Ronald Lewis a big round of applause, right? He's the leader of everything that is happening here and moving water transportation discussion throughout the city. You know, I, I, I came to this uh, city at the age of 18 from the Dominican Republic. So when, when my parents, they moved from Washington Heights to El Barrio, and I go through the Third Avenue, and you see that Third Avenue, they have five lanes. I'm pretty sure that when those roads were built 100 years ago, there was a lot of concern, a lot of question on do we need to build? How expensive is it to build this road now? Because we don't need five lanes. So we live in a city that usually has men and women with vision. And I believe that especially in a place in time where we be hit by a lot of natural disaster, and we know that climate, climate change continue, it will not stop. So we know that water transportation it play a critical role during Sandy. And we know that we don't know how hard our summer is going to be. We don't know how hard the winter is going to be. Therefore, we definitely have to continue investing, expanding water transportation. Water transportation is not a luxury. It's also a need, and it's also part of the demand that we have to look right now. Where as a city, besides having our train and our buses and the taxes, in the 2024 year, New York City will be adding an additional 500,000 new New Yorkers that they will need transportation to go to work. And I believe that the, that the improvement on water transportation that we have seen for the last couple of years has been very important. However, we need to continue expanding. And we, we cannot take any excuses on how expensive it is to build. We need to build, this is an investment that will pay back 
because we will be able to invite New Yorkers who live in the down Manhattan and say, there's a place in Inwood. Inwood has the second green area after Central Park in Manhattan. It's a hidden treasure that we have. So imagine that we will be able to bring our tourists and say, besides stopping at 42nd Street and 59th Street, you will be able to go to the Diamond area. And at the Diamond area, saying the, the farmers at the Hobson Valley, you can bring the product to Diamond by boat. So for me, like the investing on water transportation is the right investment. It will pay back for our generation, but more important, it will pay much more for the future generation. So as a chairman of the Transportation Committee, I will continue working with the EDC, with the, with the Water Alliance, Metropolitan Water Alliance, and everyone here, so that we can put the money where it's needed in order to expand water transportation and connect community that has been isolated. You know, there's no mass transportation that connects to LaGuardia. And there's going to be a $4 billion investment to renovate LaGuardia, to improve the capacity to 17 million people. The question is how people will move from LaGuardia to Lower Manhattan. And I believe that having a ferry going from Lower Manhattan back as it used to go, be going in the past, or connecting to the Bronx to LaGuardia is a right investment for New Yorkers that they need to move from LaGuardia. So thank you very much. Unfortunately, the mayor is going to be addressing the council member at 3.30 p.m. And because of that reason, I, I just wanted to pass by and excuse myself because I could not be at the panel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Adonis, Debbie, and Kyle. What great leadership we have for the waterfront. One more hand for them. Thank you very, very much. And I just want to point out the, be the beautiful kids in the Harbor School doesn't buy on their educational boat. Bon appetit. Enjoy your lunch. We'll start again in about a half an hour. <laughs>